Hi guys, welcome back to the Casual Watch View channel. So in this week's episode, we are getting round to doing the review of the Squally GMT. I did an unboxing, uploaded it a couple of weeks ago now, so if you've not seen that, definitely check it out. What I like to do with my reviews is do the unboxing first and then wear the watch for a couple of weeks and then come back and give it my full review. So let's flip the camera around and get started with the review. Here is the Squale watch. I've been really looking forward to doing the full review of this watch. Now, spoiler alert here, this is gonna be an overwhelmingly positive review. I think this is one of the best watches I bought last year, if not ever. Now, if you're not a fan of the Squale, it, before you hit that down vote, if you jump to this time code, this is where I'll be talking about some of the things that I think maybe could be improved with this watch. But anyway, let's just dive straight into the review. So what we're looking at here is the Squale 30 Atmos GMT Tropical with the Ceramica Bezel. This is the model number 1545TGC. Now, I bought this from Nomon Watches. I had an overwhelmingly positive experience with them. Not only was it a great price at $799, but it shipped in record time from Singapore. Uh, I've not had any issues with having to send this watch back, so I'm, I can't speak to their service, but their actual terms of shipping the watch out, their communication with you was absolutely fantastic. I would definitely consider buying from them again. This watch was a bit of leap of faith for me because it has a lot of things in it that I didn't traditionally like in watches. That being this kind of forced aged radium look that they use on the loom. Now you might have seen me on a few watch forums in the past comment about how I think Omega overuses this peach loom. It's not a look that I've ever liked before. Also the aging on the bezel. But we'll talk a bit more about that when I do a close up on the dial. One of the first things I did with this watch was actually put it on one of these man cave leather straps. Now, annoyingly, this watch has a 21 millimeter lug width. I don't know why they've done that. 22 would have sufficed or even 20 would have looked good on here. So what I've done is I've crammed one of these man cave leather straps on here. So apologies to McCola at, at man cave leather for forcing one of your straps on here, but it actually works really well. Nice snug fit. The overall weight of the watch is really comfortable for me. You've got that 42 millimeter case. The watch came on this metal bracelet. It is a really nicely machined metal bracelet. Just for me, it added a lot of extra weight to the watch. Now this is just totally personal preference. I put it on this man cave leather strap when I got it, but this is a really nice metal bracelet actually. It has the screw in links. We have the solid end links on here as well. It is a really nicely machined bracelet and it feels a lot higher quality than what you would expect from a watch at this price. Yeah, really nice action on the clasp here. Yeah, overall a nice metal strap, but I just wore it on this leather strap. You'll also see me put it on a NATO strap. What I would really like is a Tropic strap for this, but with that 21 millimeter lug width, I can't find a Tropic strap of that size. I don't know whether to get a 22 millimeter strap and see if I can somehow sand it down or shave it off, but we'll see how we get on with that anyway. While we're talking about the measurements, let's zoom in and do those properly. As mentioned, it has the 21 millimeter lug width, 49 millimeters lug to lug. It's a 42 millimeter case, with a 13 millimeter depth. Now this case and design is actually based on a Squale that was produced in the 1960s. The watch definitely has this forced age look to it. What they've tried to go for is uh, to simulate a watch that's aged over 30 years. So they haven't pre-aged any of these components. They've colorized them to make them look like they've aged. I guess the inspiration here would have been like a Batman Rolex where the gray is the blue that's faded and then the dark blue is the black that's faded. They've also added this aged radium look to it. So the peach loom as I kind of called it before. There's also that colorization in the numbers on the bezel, but the numbers on the bezel aren't loom. It's paint that's been made to match the loom color. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of this before, as I mentioned, but it really suits this watch. Also, the black 
dial here has some aging applied to it as well, it looks like. And we have that distinctive red GMT there and the red GMT hand, which certainly harkens back to vintage watch design. The watch uses the ETA 2893-2 quick set GMT movement. This is a movement that runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It also uses the Escheron regulation system. Now I had not heard of this before, but it's a, reg it's a system to regulate the mainspring that ETA developed. It uses two pins to regulate the hairspring. Now this is considered one of the easiest and also one of the most accurate ways of regulating the mainspring. This watch is keeping very good time for me. It's at about sort of plus three seconds a day, which is well within its specifications. What I really like about this GMT function is it has the quick jump hour hand. So each hour here is an increment between the two numbers because this bezel is a 24 hour bezel. The watch has a 300 meter water resistance, hence the 30 Atmos. I really like the case on here as well. I'm a big fan of the crown. It has a really nice grip to it here. Once you start unscrewing it, very smooth action. It gets to a certain point and then it just pops out. In fact, the whole uh, bezel has a smooth action to it as well. Let's just screw that back in. Flipping over to the back, not a very overly embellished case back. We simply have Squale stainless steel construction and then the model number. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Squale, the brand and the history of the brand. You've probably seen other videos on YouTube around these watches and the majority of people pronounce it Squale but it's actually based on the French word for shark, where the French would pronounce this as squal. Although I have since learned from my good friend Alessandro at the Slender Wrist channel that there is another word that's more commonly used for shark in French, which is ricain. So squal or squale was originally founded in 1946 by Charles von Buren in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. Now you might have heard me mention Neuchâtel, Switzerland before when I did the review of that BWC chronograph because that's where they used to be based. Now Squale originally made cases and other watch components for other brands and the shark mark with the Von Buren in the logo was actually to show the quality of the parts that were used in the case. So Squale was originally a mark that was used on the cases that they made. Now they made cases for Sin and then they famously made a 500 meter dive watch which was used by Blaupin, Tag and also Doxa which I found very interesting because you imagine Doxa, they're a premium dive watch group that they would have made their own cases. Anyway, in 1950, they started producing their own watches, but these weren't available in jewelry shops. They were only available in specialist stores that supplied divers. During the 1960s, Squale started upping production of their own watches, and they actually supplied watches to the Marine Militare Italiano, which is the Navy, the Italian Navy. So this is probably where the Squale name came from because this is the Italian pronunciation of the name. Now in 1974, Squale created their own brand. The Squale brand became its own entity and they started selling watches more commercially. Now during the quartz crisis of the 1970s, Squale actually did make the shift to making quartz watches and they had a famous watch called the Squale Rambo. But unfortunately, like many other brands of that age, they ultimately faded away. Now when Charles Van Buren finally retired, the Magi family, who were friends of Charles Van Buren and also distributors of Squale, actually bought the company. Now, they officially relaunched it in 2010 under the Squale brand. Now, the watches, uh, the Squale is based in Milan, but the watches are made in Grenken, Switzerland. Now, you might have heard me mention Grenken before. That's also where Fortis are based and also where ETA are based as well. So that's where the watches are currently being produced at the moment. 
You've heard about the history now, but let's talk about my personal experience with this watch over the last couple of weeks. I mentioned it in the intro, I've just loved wearing this watch for the last couple of weeks. It's definitely one of my favorite watches that I've bought. It's been a great travel partner for me. I have to travel a lot for work. So here it is on our New York Christmas trip that we made. I took it even ghost busting with me whilst I was there. It's been to LA with me, Chicago, also, and then back home to Laguna Beach. I, you can even wear it working construction. Now, this isn't me actually working construction. I happen to be a consultant on a whilst they were filming on a construction site, but I thought, what a great opportunity to actually uh, get some footage for the YouTube channel. If you're considering a GMT watch, I would strongly consider this Squale GMT. I know there's other YouTube channels that, that go on about Squale quite a lot, and it did make me think about them as a serious brand, but I've been blown away by the quality of this watch. Now, I did promise that I would go over some of the things that I think can be improved with it. First off, on mine, definitely the 21mm lug width is annoying. I don't know why they've done that. It looks out of proportion. I would have preferred 20 now, a close-up on the dial here, there is some very slight alignment issues. Very, very slight here. I tried to draw some lines on so you can see it. Ceramic bezel on the Squally is probably one of the best that I've ever owned on a watch. It's just gorgeous, but there is a slight bit of play in it. And I don't mean play from side to side. I mean a slight bit of play from up up and down. Now, this is very slight, and this is honestly me being overcritical and trying to pick at things. The whole watch as a package is just awesome. The only other thing I think that could be improved is that they also included a rubber strap as well. I think that would have been pretty cool. But anyway, let's flip the camera around and go back to the studio. There was my review of the Squally GMT. As you can see, I was just so impressed with this watch. It it's been a real pleasure to own. It's been a great traveling partner these last couple of weeks. And I think this will now be my daily wear. But anyway, guys, what do you think of the watch? Leave a comment in the comment section down below, or you can contact me on any of these social media links here. As always, I really appreciate you watching. If this is one of the first videos of mine that you're watching, I'd love it if you subscribed. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time on the Casual Watch Review channel. Thanks, guys. Bye.